I was at a meeting today and uh, with some people that I've known for at least 20 years. Um, and over the last four or five years, I haven't been following a specific project as much as somebody else had taken over. And I'd come in to help with a project that was ongoing. And uh, so I met up with these people that I'd worked with for at least 15 years. And I suppose with the pandemic and with everything, I kind of lost track contact wise. So anyway, at the end of the meeting, we were just talking and uh, I was meeting different people uh, with this company. And I was uh, towards the end of the meeting, I just said, um, and where is, I'm just going to call this lady Juliana. It's not her real name. I'm just going to respect her privacy. And I said, where is Juliana? Uh, somebody that I'd <laughs> worked with for 10 years. And the whole meeting became very silent. Became, you know, it just went, the place went dead. You know, it's just like, oh God, what did I, what did I say here? Um, innocent question, where's Juliana? Did she leave the company? Was she fired? And then people were looking at each other and then they said, no, no, Robert, sh she died. I said, oh, and <laughs> I don't know if these experiences come to people that you're there and you're trying, and you know, it's just, she's a, she was a younger woman than me and uh, we would have done a lot of uh, business work together at a distance, contacting email, phone calls, so forth. And I suppose, oh, yeah, okay, I didn't know. So you didn't know what you didn't know. She had died of cancer, a young woman, a young mother, and uh, rest in peace, I'll definitely pray for her. Um, and, and actually, this, this topic, this memento mori topic was on my mind, you know, what, I was going to do a video on this, because um, <laughs> actually on a business trip, Five years ago, I was I, I came with a man here to Mexico, and we I I was, uh, you know, leaving, moving to another project and handing him over the work I was doing, and uh, so we had, we came to Mexico and I'd introduced him to clients and I'd I, I'd worked with him. Uh, this man later left the company, and tragically, uh, a few years after he left the company, he he died, and uh, so Mexico now is kind of tinged with memories people that you know are no longer here you know no longer here so I just had saw this reflection I just wanted to reflect on it for a second just to put this talk in context um you know because I was flying into Mexico City this evening coming in from Veracruz and just flying over the city and looking down on the city and looking at you know the the road the the roadways the network of roads in the city and Reforma, Insurgentes, Viaducto, you know, these, these places that are so familiar from, to me. And just thinking, you know, you know, where we're going in life and so forth. And so th th this reflection, you know, I just was thinking of this reflection. Um, when you die, it's not my reflection, but it's, some, it's a reflection that, that I saw somewhere. When you die, don't worry about your body. Your relatives and the funeral staff will do it. I know this firsthand. I've done it myself. They will take out your, take you out of your house and deliver you to a funeral home of your family's choice. They will take off your clothes. They will wash you. They will dress you up. They will apply makeup to make you look presentable. Many will come to a funeral to honor you. Some will even cancel their plans and ask for leave to go to the funeral. Your things, things you hate to be borrowed, will be sold, donated or burned. Your keys, your tools, your books, your CDs, your DVDs, your games, your collections, your clothes, your phone, all of these precious things that you once held value. And to be sure the world won't stop or and cry for you and the economy will continue. You will be replaced at work. Someone with the same or even better ability will take your place. Your property will switch to heirs. And don't doubt the small and big things you've done in your life will be spoken of, judged, doubted and criticised. People who only knew your face will say, poor thing. The good friends will cry for a few hours or several days and then they will laugh again. Your pets will get used to a new owner. Your pictures will be hanging on the wall for a while. Then they will be pushed then they will be put on furniture and finally stored 
at the bottom of a box. Someone else will sit on your couch and eat from it. Deep pain in your home will last for a year, two, maybe ten. Then you will join the memories and then your story will end. It will end among people, end here, end in this world. But your story begins in a new reality, in the life after death. The things you once have, the things you once have will lose their meaning. You cannot bring your earthly possessions here. Beauty of your body, last name, property, loans, working position, bank account, the house, the car, academic titles, classmates, trophies, friends of the world, man, woman, the kids, the family. In your, in your new life, you will only need your soul. And the only property that will last is the soul. The big question is, do you know where your soul is going after this life is old, over? And we bring to mind the words of our Lord. I am the way, the truth and the life. No man comes to the Father except through me. John 14.6 Ego sum via veritas et vita. Um, so, I mean, it was just a reflection that I had. And, uh, yeah, talking about death can be very morbid. And some people just hate that topic. I remember in Italy, it was just not something you spoke about or mentioned, you know. Well, when everybody dies. You know, how do you prepare for death? I mean, as a Catholic, as a Catholic, death doesn't scare me. My faith uh, has given me an, a different meaning and different understanding to what death is. Once you go to Calvary and you reach out and you touch the hand, you put your hand on the feet of our Lord crucified, our Lord is dying. A Lord has looked down on you and asking you, you need to follow me because I'm going to the Father. You know, death takes on a totally different new meaning because that death led to a resurrection, led to, you know, the light coming back into the world and uh, the ascension and our Lord leading us on to heaven. So, I mean, there's so much hope. And the more you meditate on this, the more you want to strip away all the stuff that you keep carrying in this world that means absolutely nothing. Um, and, uh, you know, I do, I do ask people, it, it, this question is so dividing in humanity because unless you accept that there is an afterlife, unless you accept there is heaven, unless you accept that you're going there, your life can only be lived then by looking for some other meaning, which is pleasure, you know, continuous pleasure. You know, pleasuring me, filling my life with pleasure, the things I like to do, and kind of avoiding that big question, oh, where am I going at the end of my life? You know, what, when, I, when I'm on my deathbed, what will be my thoughts? Will, what will be my regrets? Um, and uh, so I die, you know, I'm just challenging people to think about eternity. I'm challenging you to think about where your soul is going at the end of this world. Um, this evening I was <laughs> I was taking an Uber uh, from the airport to the hotel and we were just there talking with the taxi, taxi driver and I was just asking him, you know, how was his day? He, he likes working in the evening and he wants to go and work in Canada and so forth. And then I said, are, are, are you a Catholic? He said, yeah, yeah, I'm a Christian, yeah. I said, okay. Uh, so I j and, uh, and you just said to him, well, you know, in Ireland we have a group, uh, I pray with a group of men and they help uh, other men with problems and so forth. And the taxi driver started crying. He said, yeah, th that happened to me. I found this uh, men's prayer group in a church literally five minutes from here where I am in Pol Polanco. And they had helped him save his marriage. And he was so thankful to the help of other men who had helped him save his marriage. I mean, as we walk in this pil pilgrimage towards heaven, let's bring other people along with us. Let's give them the hope, the beautiful hope of our faith. Because, you know, nobody's an island. We need to help each other. It's very simple. It's just picking up. It's having that conversation, saying, 
I will pray for you. I will help you. You know, just the people we encounter. That God doesn't ask us to do um, crazy, uh, great things. He asks us just to be agents of the gospel among the people we encounter every day around us. We don't have to do great things. We just have to be Christians with the people that are around us, to be Catholics, to show the love of our, of our Lord. That's the, the, our Lord crucified, you know, to, that you have to meditate on. The Lord that you put your hand out and you meditate on this crucified Lord. Put your hand out and touch his feet at this, on this crucified Lord. Stand at Calvary. You know, God sometimes draws you into that meditation. And once you've stood there in front of Christ, it's very hard to walk away from him. Once you've stood there in front of Christ and actually seen the person, the living person of Christ suffering, suffocating himself on the cross for us. That's what, how he died. He suffocated. You know, it's truly a horrific death. And once you understand this mystery of God who becomes man to redeem us, to take our suffer to show the redemptive power of suffering then we need to to show others the amazing beauty of our faith because from that suffering came redemption came the resurrection came eternal life came the way um so I, you know i just ask people to 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 think about it you know me- memento mori memento mori remember you know w- this pilgrimage we're on where we're going Death doesn't, death doesn't um, really terrify me at all. Uh, not that I, I, I hope I remain here a little bit longer to be with my beautiful kids and wife and see a few grandkids. But look, God has to do, God will do what he wants to do. And, you know, we need to be prepared every day. We don't know the day or the hour. We don't know. Just prepare our soul to encounter Christ. Um, and it's a be- you know, it's a be- our faith can be very beautiful if we just live it simply, and uh, and help other men. And there are other men. There are many men and women, our brothers, our sisters, who are willing to reach out and help others. And uh, and I suppose in Ireland, you know, where you know I'd be returning to soon, we need to grow that love for the faith. You know, rekindle that, and it needs to come from the laity. We need we need to take action in evangelizing re-evangelizing Ireland making people understand the radical authenticity by which we want to preach this beautiful faith especially the Eucharist and uh, it can only be done by us in our interior giving ourselves to Christ we have to hand over our souls to Christ Lord what do you want me to do where do you want me to go? What do you want me to say? What do you ask the Holy Spirit? You know, do you want what do you want? You know, where do we go? Anyway, just a, just a brief thought this evening. I'm pretty tired. I've been up since since five this morning, and uh, I've flown out, flown in over Mexico City. It, it, it it's one of the most amazing cities in the world. You know, and just flying in over the city is is something quite spectacular. And uh, I suppose yeah. But, you know, that was the reflection was coming today. It's a, it's a bittersweet moment, you know. I'm remembering people, two people specifically, that, uh, you know, I would have worked with here in Mexico. Um, and they're, you know, sadly no longer here. People that were younger than me, supposedly healthier than me. And, uh, you know, I do, I do pray for them. And uh, if I could go back and, and say different, and done di- things differently and, you know, just, you don't know when you're going to see them see people for the last time so treat people with charity with love respect we don't know you know life isn't easy you don't know what's going on in other people's lives and we must help them especially priests religious you know it's a tough time you know i'd ask people to be kind and to help and to reach out anyway god bless take care and pray for me good night bye